So this is a chef's take on the dish ratatouille from the movie Ratatouille. I've reached out to a few professional chefs, someone who literally makes food for a living. They went to cooking school, they work in restaurants. This is as professional as it gets. I basically sent them 14 photos of dishes that exist in Pixar movies. Some of them are sweet, some of them are savory, but the main thing is these dishes don't actually exist. They don't even make sense in real life. So what I really want from this, what I really ask these chefs to make. If these dishes weren't fictional, if they existed in a menu, in a restaurant, in real life, somewhere where you could go and buy them, I want to know what they would look like, but also what would it taste like? This first item is basically from, I would say, one of my top three Pixar movies. It's from the movie Monsters, Inc. Specifically, there's this scene, the main characters go to this restaurant, and in the restaurant, it's the strangest food scenes out of any Pixar movie. It's truly bizarre. They're eating eyeballs, octopus. It's so weird that I've never seen anyone recreate this food in an edible form. The specific dish for this is this eyeball sushi. It's these sushi rolls that are covered in eyeballs. One of the monsters is eating it and then he's got a parasite inside of him. It wouldn't make most people hungry, apart from me, because I really want to try it. So, this is the Monsters, Inc. eyeball sushi made by a professional chef if this dish was served in one of his restaurants. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> This is beautiful. You might be wondering what exactly am I looking at? And I'm wondering what exactly is looking at me? <laughs> this should have been called I roll sushi. I rolls. I am a genius. It looks really similar. Honestly, I think this truly looks like something out of the movie. I don't know if mozzarella and sushi is something that will go together perfectly, but I mean, maybe. I'm gonna try to give you guys a close up and I'm gonna read to you also the description of the dish. The eyeballs look so real that it makes this not appetizing. Like this almost makes you not want to eat it. Making these kinds of foods out of cake, which we've done a lot of on my channel, is a lot easier than this. So the chefs who made these items actually sent me exactly what it is so you guys know what we're going to be eating. So this is it's a pickled cucumber and avocado sushi rolls with fresh mozzarella pearls and seaweed black sesame jelly on top. This actually sounds like you probably go together. I mean, they must have tried it. Some of these are pickled cucumber and some of these are, I'm going to assume this one is avocado. This is so strange to hold the eyeballs. I'm gonna try this one, the pickled one, and I'm gonna just have the whole thing in one go. It's already worth the thousands that I spent in this video. I'm not even joking. <sighs> wow. I have no words, I wanna go for a second one. I wanna try the avocado one next. I already knew that the people I hired to make this were gonna do an incredible job, but these flavors work. The pickled cucumber with the mozzarella somehow works. The jellies seem a little bit tough, but once it's all mixed in there, I couldn't even, I wasn't even thinking about it. I just got a flavor of black sesame in it. Five star, gourmet, like Nobu has nothing on this. This is some weird fictional Monsters Inc. version of Nobu. If this existed in real life, it would send them out of business. This. this is the avocado one. Also really good. I, I don't know what to say. The texture is better on the pickled cucumber one because there's some crunch in it. The avocado one is like a pillow sushi. Like it's so smooth and creamy the whole thing. I can't wait to see what else this video is bringing. I don't think this would ever exist in a real restaurant. However, if it did, I would be the number one client. This is incredible. I truly wish you guys could have experienced this. There is a chance that this one is falling apart as we speak. So I'm gonna try to be really quick. This next item is from the movie Brave, which in my opinion, one of the most underrated Pixar movies. I asked the chef who specializes specifically in patisserie, very delicate baking goods. This is a gourmet chef's take on the spell cake from Brave. This has to be one of the best one. It's definitely smaller and it's also, it looks very bougie, like five star. It's exactly what I wanted from this video. It's a gourmet version of what we saw on the movie. If it was to exist in real life, it would be something like this. I have done the icing sugar myself. It didn't come dusted with icing sugar. So it came with the icing sugar on the side and I kind of tried myself to do a good job at dusting it. The biggest difference between this and the animated one is actually the icing sugar dusting. I've done it in the wrong spot. I don't know what I was thinking. We can try to do this now, but I don't think it's gonna be any better. I think it's because it starts to disappear when it touches that little soft center because this one is very gooey in the center. It's, it's not cake-like. Okay, is that better? This is a citrus tartlet with Scottish shortbread crust 
and wild berry jam in the center. No shade to Pixar, but this one definitely looks bougier. <laughs> this one looks more premium. Just putting it nice. It is soft like cake. It's not crunchy on the side, so it kind of does remind me of the one from the movie. The crust is strangely soft, really truly like cake, and then the center is definitely like a gooey, kind of like tart pie mixture. This is even better than the sushi. I don't know, it keeps getting better. I want to get a bit from the center so we can get a lot of that jam. This is gonna be good. You know when you just know that something is like good, like well made, like someone knows their stuff, like they knew what they were doing. I was not ready. This combination is insane. It's the whole thing is very like, what's the opposite of sweet that isn't bitter? There's a word for this. Tangy? Is it tangy? It's, it's everything I could have asked for and more. I hope I don't turn into a, a bear. I watched these movies so many years ago. I don't even know anymore. I'm here for the food, not the storyline. So also me, every time I go to the cinema, and I go straight for the nachos bar. I don't know if they have these at Disneyland. Someone please let me know if they've made this. Send me a screenshot if they do, because I will go there and buy this, because it'll probably be cheaper to go to Disneyland than to get this made by a chef again. You can see the crust effect in the bottom. You can really see that it's like a homemade kind of pie. You can literally see that someone poked it with a fork. Wow. This is from Toy Story 3, and there is this scene in which Bonnie is playing with a plastic hamburger. <laughs> this is so random. It's basically a plastic hamburger and topped with jelly beans. It's very much like a kid's food. This doesn't seem like it would ever translate into a real dish. So that is the reason why I wanted to include this one. In my opinion, impossible to make this into something that would be commercial in a restaurant. This is the chef's steak on a plastic hamburger from Toy Story 3. As soon as I remove this, it's, I'm not saying this lightly, the best smelling burger I have ever smelled. It's smoky, cheesy, it's insane. It's so shiny. And most important, the jelly beans are on top. How is this going to taste nice? I have no idea. So the jelly beans are actually like a, like a jelly reduction. Is that what you call this in cooking? And if any of you went to cooking school, you know how to make this. It looks kind of similar to the stuff from the movie, but it's more like a real version of it. This is an Angus beef burger in a brioche bun with smoked wood cheese and horseradish jelly beans. And it's jelly beans, they literally wrote it in quotation because these are obviously not jelly beans, otherwise it wouldn't be edible. I don't want to touch them because they are kind of, I can see they're getting softer and softer. I think this is, it's not meant to be touched. So we got the, <gasps> so we got the beef burger and then it's, the cheese I think is what makes this smell incredible. It probably looked a lot better when it was just finished being done, but we are going to give this a try. The amount of creativity that you need to come up with a horseradish jelly, that's the creativity that I want to achieve in my life. Can we squish the jellies? It's really weird. A jelly bean hamburger. Things you can only see on my YouTube channel, this. You can kind of see, we're getting a bite of literally everything in here. Oh, interesting. I can taste the jelly. It's kind of melting now. That's so, so, it's really weird, but the flavors really work. Like, I don't want to repeat myself, but it is what's happening. I don't know much about burgers, but it tastes like an expensive part of the cow, <laughs> the beef. I don't think the bun is homemade. I'm going to be honest. I think this is just like a really good brioche bun bought from the supermarket. It doesn't taste homemade. Like, maybe actually. What do you guys think? Look at the bottom of it. The cheese with the horseradish is incredible. What an incredible pairing. It tastes mustardy, the whole thing. Cheesy, smoky is the best way to describe this. If you ever try a burger, try putting horseradish in it, even if you don't make it as a jelly bean, it's life-changing. Wow. This next food item is from the movie Inside Out, and I know at a first look it seems like there's not a whole lot of foods in Inside Out, but actually I do my research for these videos and I was surprised there was a lot of food items. It was difficult to pick something that I wanted to see in real life. There's a specific scene in Inside Out in the real world part of the movie, I think, where you see some broccoli pizza. One of those things that was always in the back of my mind, like I've never tried it. It's not that crazy of a pairing, but would this ruin pizza or would it taste incredible? 
incredible because I honestly think it might taste incredible. So I wanted to see this San Francisco's broccoli pizza. And this is what it looks like. It is toasty. <laughs> so this is our broccoli pizza. And I actually requested for this to be made vegan. I'm not sure if that was mentioned in the movie, but I always thought that that was a vegan pizza. That's why the cheese melted kind of weird because vegan cheese doesn't melt very easy. When it got here, I put this in the oven for a little bit and I think it went a little bit too crunchy, but honestly, it still looks like good pizza just with broccoli on top. It's strangely vibrant and yellow. If the dish from the movie was to be made in real life, I think it would it would look kind of like this. This is a thin crust pizza with coconut based vegan cheese and broccoli topping. So that is what the chefs have made for us to experience. Did Pixar ruin pizza? Possibly. Vegan cheese tastes like processed American cheese. This is really, really weird. Turns out I love vegan cheese. Kind of better than regular cheese. I cannot taste coconut at all. The broccoli in pizza is interesting because it's not soft and it's not crunchy. So it's almost like a rubbery texture in the pizza. Texturally, it's not the best. I'm gonna ask them to send me just one block of vegan cheese because I'm trying to taste just the cheese because I really want to, I've ruined this now, but vegan cheese is creamy and it's got this weird, almost artificial cheese flavor in it that I love. If the inside out pizza was real, I think it would be something similar to this. Would I think this is for everyone? Definitely not, but I happen to really like this. There is zero chances that I would ever make this video and not include the most iconic food dish from a Pixar movie. I would go as far as say from any movie ever. You're probably guessing it. This is from Ratatouille and it's the main dish from the movie, the Ratatouille that looks incredible. It's this, this beautiful stack of vegetables. It's almost like a new take on Ratatouille, which is usually not as beautiful. So I asked the chef to recreate that. So this is a chef steak on the dish Ratatouille from the movie Ratatouille. I mean, it does look very, very similar. I mean, it's quite something. I don't even want to move it. By the way, this on top is not edible. I have no idea how this is going to translate on camera. It's one of those things, but to me, looking at it in real life, it looks beautiful. I think the sauce on the outside is a little chunky. That is the only thing. This was the most expensive dish out of the whole thing. It was worth it. I played this myself, so I mean, if the plating is not the best job, the cooking and the flavors will be there. I think these people knew exactly what they were doing so the way this actually came to my house it was all lined up in a tray like all the slices of the vegetables and the sauce was on the side on a separate container this is literally called a pixar style ratatouille with roast red pepper sauce i had to brush this with a brush they sent me a brush like a pastry brush. Did I do a terrible job with the plating? I don't think so. This is not edible, by the way. Ratatouille is definitely my top three of Pixar movies, as you're probably expecting. It's tender, but it holds shape really well. It's kind of weird. I feel like I've ruined this literally the moment I cut into it. I'm gonna dip this in the sauce. I have a lot more of these vegetables in the sauce just sitting here, so I, this better be good. I think it's gonna be a hit. I'm gonna play some French music and just sit here in quiet. It's really good. There's a roast flavor to this whole thing, but everything is kind of like, carrots are like so sweet, and I don't know if it's possible for something to be soft, kind of melts in your mouth when you bite into it, but it holds shape so well. It does not make any sense. I feel like I'm actually eating the real thing. And this sauce, I've got a whole container of this sauce. I am going to put this on everything. Even though it looks really fancy, it just tastes so homely and like truly incredible. It also tastes fancy. I don't know what I'm saying. This is really, really good. The strangest Pixar movie for any kind of food references is definitely Wally. -E. The movie's set in the future and like people have evolved in a very strange way where they don't eat 
physical food. Everything that humans eat is actually under the drinking form. So there's this specific scene when the people in the movie are picking what they're gonna eat for like their meals. And like the foods are like little digital cards just floating around. And you can see what's inside those drinks, those liquid meals that they have. It's really weird stuff like fries and <laughs> seeing how weird that was, you know, there was no other way. So the food that I requested was two of those liquid meals, one sweet and one savory one, specifically liquid pizza and a liquid pie. This is a chef's take on a liquid version of a meal from a fictional movie that is supposed to be what humans eat in like 10,000 years. Really providing the content here. So this... So I let the chefs make the drinks, but I actually designed both of the labels for it. And I was trying to do this very similar to the ones in the movie. And I think, I think we've done a good job. I think they look kind of like they don't belong here. I'm very good at Photoshop, but I'm not the best just designing in general. So this is kind of what I came up with. I was trying to use the same exact colors. I think it ended up looking pretty similar to the movie. I'm not gonna lie. I do think it looks really cool. So this one is supposed to be blueberry pie and this one is supposed to be just cheese pizza. So it's really weird. It's got this yellow line. It literally looks like pizza, like the dough and then the cheese on top. It's really strange. There's a pie in liquid form, a pie milkshake. Strangely <laughs> delicious. I mean, this is made by a chef who obviously knows what they're doing, but It tastes like blueberry pie, but also like apple. There's apple in there or cinnamon. Wait, it might be cinnamon. Cinnamon apple blueberry pie. It's really good. It's a little bit grainy though. I was expecting this to be a little bit more smoother. If this was an option at a milkshake cafe, if this was an option, it would be a best selling one. Let's put it that way. That's the best way for me to describe this. Suddenly I want to be one of those people sitting in chairs in the movie. I thought it was going to take 10,000 years. It might be now. This one feels a lot smoother though. This is very even. It's almost like dough. This looks like dough. The first thing that I'm getting is bread. It's more like pizza dough flavor than pizza. I'm not getting cheese or any toppings or tomato. It's just, it's sweet bread. Cream cheese bread milkshake. That's how you describe it. It sounds gross. It's surprisingly good. I have no words. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I like it. I honestly think these taste good. There's something in it that makes it cheesecakey. Do you know the smell of fresh bread? Like when you first put pizza, like homemade pizza in the oven, that bakery smell, basically that in a milkshake. It's a lot smoother than this one. Both of them surprisingly good. I think I would order this. I'm very excited for this next one because I really wanted to include something from a recent Pixar movie because I know Pixar constantly makes incredible movies that become classics almost instantly. They've just released a few months ago the movie Loca, which is set in Italy. Like, this is ideal, which obviously features some incredible Italian food, but there is one specific dish, one specific food scene in Loca that really, it's this specific pesto pasta dish. I'm not sure if they ever mentioned what exactly it is. I sent the screenshot that I've shown you to the chef and basically this is a real life version of that pesto dish. Oh my God, this is really tight now. I'm gonna make pesto fly to my ceiling. So this is the pesto pasta from the Loca movie made by a, clearly someone who knows what they're doing. You see how the pasta is like you can just tell that it's fresh, but the sauce is like, the pesto sauce is sticking to the pasta in this very like, you cannot make this at home. But in the movie, there was a piece of basil right in the center. Uh, there was a piece of basil in the center when it arrived. This is the basil now. This is what happened to it. I don't know, I guess it's from sitting with the pesto and everything. So let me tell you what the description of this is from the chef. This is called Trenete al pesto and it's Trenete pasta served with homemade basil pesto, potatoes and green beans. I've never had potatoes in my pasta. Am I uncultured? It looks good. I've just never had it. So thank you, Pixar, for bringing this experience into my life. It looks so good that this one looks more animated than the one in the movie. I don't know how that makes sense, but it really does. Kind of want to try the potato on its own. Oh, this potato is like tough. That's different. 
I don't know, I've never had potato in pasta. I have no idea where it's supposed to be like, so maybe that's the way. I'm trying to make this pretty. So this is the pasta coated in pesto. Yep. <laughs> mm. It's like being back in Italy. I love pesto and I usually buy it from a jar. This one so thick and it's not too salty, it's just flavorful without being salty or spicy, which I, in my opinion is one of the greatest things about pasta dishes in Italy. Kinda wanna get a bit of the potato and the green beans. I fully get the potato now, basically, because the potato is not fully cooked, it gives you just a different texture. It honestly works, and the green beans, exactly the same thing, it's just texture. The simplest things in Italian food taste incredible. Like, if this was just plain spaghetti made by an Italian grandma, it probably tastes incredible. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. Remember when I said the Monsters, Inc. as some of the strangest food items in the whole of the Pixar food universe? I felt like we should explore that a little deeper. This is possibly my favorite scene in the whole of Monsters, Inc., which is when they meet the Yeti. He offers them these yellow snow cones, which sounds Sounds really bad, yellow snow. Then he mentions that the snow cones are actually made of lemon. So basically I took a screenshot of these yellow snow cones and I sent it to the patisserie chef who does all this baked stuff. And this is what they came up with. <laughs> this looks unreal. It's messing with my brain because in real life it looks even more real than you guys are seeing it on camera, but like this is crazy, like it looks rendered. I've built the stand myself and I've also created the little cones and they look exactly like the texture on them. It's like, the texture is truly intriguing. Like it looks like Play-Doh, not edible, but in a way that Pixar does it. They should be on sale in Disneyland if they're not making it. Well, they probably will after this. So there we go, six not yellow snow lemon cones. I think these are gonna be lemon flavor. Let me read you the description of these. These are lemon elderflower cake balls. I've made the cones myself, so I use staplers in the back, so probably you shouldn't see this bit. This does not look animated. It's my intention that matters, and I have good intentions. So. I was like, I can't just serve these like that. That's gonna be disappointing, so... It's difficult to make a cone, that's all I'm gonna say. This is lemon elderflower. I am so interested. Even though cake pops are usually not my favorite thing, I just hope the layer of frosting is not too much frosting. Like, the layer of icing on the outside, I hope it's not too thick. This is a big reveal. That looks like sausage. I don't know if it's the elderflower or something. I mean, the ratio of uh, the frosting on the outside is actually not too bad. I hate being colorblind. Are these red or pink? That's how I see them. So that's why I said it looks like pepperoni. I don't want to eat the fondant on the outside. I'm going to be honest. It's just not for me. So this is the cake pops. It's like lemon, but fancy. <laughs> Oh my god. It doesn't even taste like cake pops. It tastes like the most expensive. It's almost fudge-like. I'm not gonna be able to show you the texture on camera. It's a very wet cake pop, almost fudgy. It tastes like lemon, but there's something about it. I think it's the elderflower. It's a bit floral, I guess that makes sense. I usually don't like cake pops because I think they're too sweet, but these are actually perfect. I'm gonna even try it with a... Wait, I'm gonna bite one of these. <laughs> Wow. These look like unreal. This looks straight out of Toy Story or something. I prefer it without the icing or I don't even know what you call it, the fondant on the outside. It's great, it's decoration, but I mean, it doesn't taste good to me. It's just sugar. This, on the other hand, is perfect. I could honestly make one of these videos just of foods from Ratatouille because it's just some of the most popular Pixar foods. So I wanted to include some more in this video. So this one, this one scene in which they're making stuffed mushrooms from lightning, from literally lightning in the sky. I don't know exactly what's in it, but like a cheesy stuffed mushroom. So I have requested the same exact food item, maybe not made by lightning, I don't think that would be safe. And this is what they sent me. As soon as I lift this, the smell of garlic, it's, there's so much garlic in this, like I can literally smell it. Out of the million foods that I have sitting in my house right now, this is the one that I can smell. It's so garlicky and mushroomy. I kind of want to show you what it looks like. I was expecting them to be a little bit smaller, but I guess if these are this big, it's really making me kind of scared of the size of Remy. <laughs> Imagine the size of Remy holding this. He would have to be 
like a New York subway kind of rat. Sorry, Remy, but like... These are garlic parmesan stuffed mushrooms. It doesn't really say what type of mushrooms. They kind of look like portobello mushrooms because they're really big. I know these are going to be incredible because because everything has been great in this video. Every time I make stuffed mushrooms, they came out so weird because when I cut into them, they're so wet. These, how are they dry? This is why some people are talented and some people are me. How do you make a stuffed mushroom that holds shape like this? I am dying to try this because the smell of garlic is so intense. Oh my god. Wow, I could cry. I might cry. <laughs> That's just parmesan and garlic. How does it taste like things that I've never tasted before? There are levels to this flavor. I don't know. This is really, really good. The garlic in this, I don't know how they made this. It's like a garlic cookie crumble. <laughs> That's how I would describe it. If they sold these in a jar, I would sell my soul for this. I want to be a chef when I grow up. This next food item is also from the movie Brave. And this is a scene in which the twins, triplets, I honestly can't remember. Quadruplets? The little kids, they've got this plate, this tray of these buns. They look like sweet bread with icing on top. I wasn't entirely sure what it was and it's kind of from far away so you can't really see the details. It's not like a close-up of the food item so I thought I'm just gonna send this white picture to the chef and just see what they came up with and honestly I very much regret that I did this because I don't like what's under here. I was looking forward to freezing whatever this would be. It's gonna be great for Christmas. So this is what the chef's sent me and i know i feel bad even just criticizing this because i know this looks incredible literally straight out of the cover a christmas cookbook that's the cover the reason why i don't like it it's because the buns they're basically hot cross buns they've got like they've got dried fruit and like nuts and stuff on the inside and i, I really can't eat dried fruit anything this is dried fruit and cinnamon pull apart cross buns with glacé French cherries and sugar icing. This is a mouthful. <laughs> I'm sure some people are watching this video and being like, you are honestly out of your mind, which I am. I have been for a long time. You might have missed a few uploads. So I'm excited for the icing. I could lick the icing. <laughs> I don't even like icing. These are basically hot cross buns with icing on top. And I'm sure, I'm sure they're great. Oh, they're actually quite tough. This is called a glacé cherry. I just learned that today as well, so... And this is it on the inside. So, you could put some butter, you could maybe... Oh, that would be an interesting way to eat this with an icing sandwich. I am so clever. My mom would love this. In fact, I would freeze this and just save it for Christmas and that's her dinner. Honestly, she would eat just that. She'd be happy with four of those. It's one of those things I thought maybe when I grow up, it's gonna change. I'm grown up now. I don't think my palate is fully developed. You know what? I'm gonna eat the cherry. Ugh. Mm. Turns out I don't like glassy cherries. Okay, I'm gonna try to eat just the bread. Raisins. I find this truly not enjoyable. It's bitter and it tastes like it tastes like the pockets of old people. You know when they give you food out of their pockets, it always has this like this old furniture taste. That's what this tastes like to me. I don't like it. This next dish is also from Ratatouille, but I actually wanted to include something that wasn't cooked by Remy. I wanted to include something from one of the chefs. Gusto, I think that's how you pronounce it. One of the chefs in Ratatouille. There's a specific scene in which they're showing you who Gusto is, and they show some of his cookbooks, some of his TV shows, and there's this moment where it kind of freezes. In one of the TV shows from Gusto, it kind of freezes in a dish that he's holding, and it's a salad with fish on top and it just looks so different from everything else that we've had in this video because it's kind of like a real meal, like a salad. I thought this would be a great challenge for the chefs. This is, I think this is salmon, it's like a fish salad. This is the chef's interpretation of a dish by Gusso. So this is our fish salad. It smells incredible. It looks suspiciously similar <laughs> to the one in the movie, right? 
Am I delusional or is this like really close? Like the fish and everything. It is also plated like a, like a gourmet meal. I plated this myself. I didn't put all the dressing in it because I was kind of scared that it was going to ruin the look. So I do have more dressing sitting there on the side. This is a grilled salmon fillet with baby spinach and parmesan mixed baby leaves and Greek feta salad. I don't know. I just want to say this is my public announcement that I do enjoy salads. I used to think that all salads were bad, but recently I've realized some salads are bad. Some of them are really, really good. So I'm going to go for the fish first because he had a crispy layer. Wow. If I knew how to cook fish like that, I would be unstoppable. Honestly, imagine me making good YouTube videos. <laughs> I didn't even know that fish could be... It could taste like this. Kind of weird that it was sitting underneath the fish. It's gonna make the salad taste kind of fishy, you know? No, it tastes great. <laughs> this is really good. I don't know what leaves these are. I think they're called baby greens. I wish he had more dressing, but that was definitely my fault. But this truly tastes and looks like something that Gusto would have made. So the chefs understood the assignment in this video. If this is not from a Pixar movie, my name is probably trending on Twitter right now because Pixar stands. If I got this wrong, I am 100% getting canceled. This is a dish from the movie Zootopia. I pray that this is a Pixar movie. It's too late now, but there's this scene in Zootopia in it's so hard to notice because it's like so casual, just a little detail in the corner of the screen. They're basically outside in like a park or something and they're selling the Zootopia world version of a corn dog. And it's basically a carrot on a stick. It's a bunch of carrots, I think, lying down just, just the same way people sell hot dogs in New York City. It's kind of like their version of a New York City hot dog. I was so excited for this, it didn't even cross my mind that this might not be Pixar. But anyways, so this is what the chef sent me. It's literally two carrots on a stick and these are the biggest. These are massive. Look at the size of these carrots. They look exactly like the ones in the movie because in the movie they're like lying down like this. Also, why does this look like a giant hot Cheeto? You can't probably see, but they're covered in like spices and they're like definitely well cooked, I think. They're soft and tough at the same time. This is one of the things that I find the most impressive is the textures of food when chefs make it. It's just like, how do they do this? These are honey brown sugar glazed carrots. So. Did you guys see how soft that was when I was biting into it? Like the way it's fully cooked. This is so good that it literally doesn't even taste like a carrot. This is tastes like a hot dog or something, like a, a very delicious, bougie tasting hot dog. How do they know when to stop cooking this in order to retain the shape? But they also that it's pleasant when you bite into it. Like this whole thing, it's fully cooked. Look, I'm gonna bite in the center so you see. So it's fully cooked all throughout. I don't fully understand. Vegan corn dogs be like, I would eat this as a main. Just actually just this, just give me a carrot on a stick. This should be on sale at Disneyland. This is slowly becoming market research for Disney. I am an idiot. I should honestly charge for these videos. Can't believe this is free. I really wanted something from Monsters University. I was really struggling to find a food scene. I was looking at the cafeteria scenes and trying to find something edible. Then I remember the scene with the tray and the cupcakes and it says, be my pal on the cupcakes. And it's really cute. And I thought they look kind of messy. I thought it'd be kind of interesting. What I wasn't expecting is that these are even messier. <laughs> these cupcakes don't we truly captured the messiness of the ones from the movie. I did the writing myself, the letters, that's why it looks like that. And they are melting. I think this is a cream cheese vanilla frosting on it. I did the writing myself because it would have probably just melted if they had done it themselves. So I messed up the writing and now I've messed up even more. These are vanilla bean cupcakes with cream cheese frosting. So, you know, it's kind of standard. They do look standard in the movie. I think they forgot to send the writing frosting. So I had to do this myself, that's why it's a little messy and it's literally melting. This doesn't even make sense anymore. What words can I make with this? Pay me. Wow, perfect. Pay... PayPal. My PayPal is down below. Accepting donations. There might be something in the center. I don't know. I mean, they are just vanilla. 
The cream cheese frosting, okay, it's a great flavor-wise, it's unbeatable, but it always melts weird. It melts in this sticky kind of way. Oh man, please let it be something in the center. No, these are just vanilla cupcakes and they actually seem a little bit dry. I wouldn't go as far as saying that I could have done a better job myself. Interesting. It's so intense, the vanilla in it. They are a little bit dry, the sponge part, but it might be because I kept them in the fridge. The flavor is incredible, I just wish they weren't as dry. That's basically it. Also, I'm sorry if this is spelling out some offensive word in your language. Yet another interesting video from me. You're welcome. I am happy to provide the content. I don't know. I really hope you guys liked it. I really enjoyed filming it, but obviously I love animation movies like Pixar Studios, Disney. I really like their movies. So if you liked it, you know what to do. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel only if you enjoy my videos, but the button is right there. So if I make a part two, you might not want to miss out. New hair color situation. I didn't want to draw attention to it, but we just gotta, we gotta get used to it. I don't know, like it seemed like a good idea. <laughs> Sometimes we have ideas and then we regret it. It's it's how I would describe my YouTube channel <laughs> I know you guys want content I know soon there's gonna be two weeks in which everyone's home and you guys want to watch videos and I'm literally trying my best to get stuff out I feel the pressure I need the pressure for my creative juices to flow in the right direction So thank you for putting pressure on me to put the content out I am trying my best, but there's only one of me. So I'm trying my best. I love you and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye. Bye